Hello and welcome back to another full snap of PC build guide. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Thermaltake. This is the View 380 XL TG ARGB. If you see any parts you like, you'll find links to everything that I've used in the description. So let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our tempered glass panel, there's a captive thumb screw at the back, which you need to loosen. And then the panel can be tilted out, lifted up and away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. You notice that our top panel is split into two. In the main chamber, we've got mesh and we've got this solid panel over our second chamber. Both the panels are held on with two captive thumb screws at the back. And once they've been loosened, the panel can be pulled backwards and lifted up and away. For most builds, there's no need to remove this part off the top panel. The only thing it gives you access to is there's two screw holes here that lets you move the mesh on the front and side corner. And the two screws here hold on our tempered glass front panel. Then to remove the front panel, we can simply push it forward from the top and lift up and away. Take a look at our case's front I.O. We've got power and reset buttons, two USB type A ports, a combined headphone and microphone jack, and a single USB type C port. Beside our tempered glass front panel, we've got a mesh panel, and it wraps around to the other side of the case. And this is to act as a source of intake for our side mounted fans. Take a look in from the side, you can see the Thermaltake have installed three 120mm ARGB reverse blade fans and they'll be bringing plenty of cool air in through the mesh panels on the side and front of the case to your build. And it is possible to mount up to a 360mm radiator, although there is no support for fans and radiators in multiples of 140. On the top of the case, it's up to three 120 or 240mm fans or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator. And if we take a look down at the bottom of the case, we've got this recessed area where it is possible to mount up to three 120mm fans. Beneath that, on the bottom of the case, we've got a removable dust filter, which can simply be pulled out from the front for cleaning. In terms of motherboard support, it's up to ATX. And you see we've got additional cutouts for back connector ATX and also back connector micro ATX motherboards. If you want to go with a CPU cooler, the maximum height supported is up to 160mm. If you're not planning on going with the back connector motherboard, it's good to see we've got rubber grommets up at the top, and we've also got this cable cover bracket over towards the right hand side of the motherboard. So this cable cover bracket is removable. There's a thumb screw at the top of our second compartment that you're going to need to remove, and then the bracket can simply be tilted forward, lifted up and removed from the case. Take a look at the rear of the case, you can see we've got eight horizontal expansion slot brackets and in terms of graphics card support it's absolutely massive, up to a maximum length of 420mm. So Thermaltake are keen that your GPU is well supported and in the kit accessory box you get this GPU support bracket that comes in two parts. Simply connect them together and join them together using one of the power supply screws. Then you'll notice we've got this little cutout here which is where you're going to mount your GPU support bracket. So if we look at the back of the bracket there's two holes in it. So line them up with this cutout, and then you're going to want to take two of the thumb screws from the case accessory box and screw them in from the back. So I've just put the thumb screws in the back loosely. First of all, we're going to install our graphics card. Then we're going to be able to lift this up to where it's supporting the graphics card and tighten the thumb screws at the back. So if we loosen this screw at the top, we're then going to be able to tilt the bracket one way or the other, making sure we're going to get it out of the way of our GPU fans. Moving over to our case's second compartment, we've got this cable covered door, which doubles as a drive mounting bracket. It's held on with two screws, one at the top and one at the bottom, and then you're going to be able to open the door up. So on the back of this door, it is possible to mount up to three drives. The top two drive mounting slots are for two and a half inch drives. There's one here, one here, and at the bottom you can mount either a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch drive. So all you're going to simply do is set the drives into place on this side and then screw them in from the back. And you're going to use the screws with the little lip around the outside for two and a half inch drives and the screw with the rounded head for three and a half inch drives. It is possible to remove this cable cover door during the build. All you're going to need to do is pull it up to remove it from the case. For most builds, there's no need to remove this mesh panel, although you may want to do it if you want to replace the fans on the side with different fans or radiator. The panel is held on with two screws at the top, and once they've been removed, you can simply lift the mesh panel up to remove it from the case. So you can see the only thing it's going to do is give you access to the screw holes for these fans, so I'm going to leave this panel in place. So in terms of cable management, we've got some Velcro cable straps to help organise our cables, and as you'd expect with a back connector and motherboard in a dual chamber case, cable routing space is absolutely massive. So it's good to see that Thermaltake of Daisy chained the three fans together, 
The only thing I'm noticing is that we've actually got three pin voltage control connectors rather than four pin PWM connectors. So that is a little bit disappointing. And it's good to see that all our case cables are color matched to the color of the case. So your power supply is going to go here mounted on its side and we've got a little shelf here with a rubber pad on it to mount your power supply on. In terms of power supply support, the maximum length support is up to 180 millimeters. And we get a really nice case accessory box with everything organized in individual compartments. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're going to be installing our CPU, the backplate for our CPU cutter, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open our socket cover we're going to push this lever down and out, bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard and then we can open the socket cover up. Holding our CPU by the edges and making sure the text is the correct way up, we're going to lower it down carefully into the socket. Once we're happy everything's sitting correctly we can go ahead and close our socket cover down. As we close the lever the white bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. To remove the heatsink there's a little lever over the side we can press and then we're going to be able to tilt the heatsink up and lift away. We're going to need to remove the plastic protection on the heatsink and also on the heat pad on the motherboard. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the socket and as we flatten it down there's a little clip here that will hold it in place. Then all we need to do is return our heatsink. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU so we'll open the clips on these slots. Then all we need to do is line the RAM up with a slot and once we're happy it's all lined up it's just some firm pressure and it will clip into place. Then it's the same thing with our second stick. So we've got an LJ1851 socket but it shares the same mounting holes as LJ1700 so you want to grab the back plate that says LJ1700 on it. There is some double sided adhesive on it so this will help it stick to the back of the motherboard but this is only a temporary build for me so I'm just going to set it into place. Then you're going to want to grab the bag of thumb screws labelled LGA 1700 and we're going to screw one onto each corner. Next we can insert the motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back and our middle standoff is elongated so once it goes through the middle hole it's going to help hold the motherboard in place. And then we'll secure the motherboard to the case using nine of the screws with a little lip around the outside from the case accessory box. So to get access to our middle screw hole we're going to have to temporarily remove the M.2 SSD heatsink. Next we've got our case cables to get plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring our cable in through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing down the way. We've got two RGB headers down the bottom of the motherboard so I'm going to bring the RGB cable coming from our rear fan through and we'll get it plugged in. Then we can bring the RGB cable coming from our side fans through and get it plugged in. We've got three system fan headers here so I'm going to bring the fan cable coming from our rear fan through and get it plugged into place and then we'll bring the fan cable coming from our side fan through and push it into place. Our front panel connector is going to go into the left hand side of this header here so we'll bring our cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Then we've got our front panel USB type A cable so we'll bring our cable through the cutout, line it up with a header and once we're happy everything's lined up, push it into place. And then we've got our front panel type C header here, so we'll bring our cable through the cutout, line it up and push into place. So this brings us on to our bottom case fans. We're going to want to have them set as intake. So this would mean we would have the ugly side of the fans on display at the bottom of the case. But thermal take care about aesthetics and that's why we've got these replaceable fan blades. So all we're going to need to do is get our thumbs in at the back and push this blade off. And then we can take our reverse blade, line it up and simply push it into place. And these are going to be some of the easiest fans you've ever installed. If we look at one side you've got golden pins and on the other side you've got gold contacts and the fans are going to connect magnetically. So simply line them up and they're going to clip together. And even our fan cable is going to connect magnetically. So just before I set the fans into place I'm just going to pass our fan cable through to the back and then I'm going to slide our fans down into place. And we'll secure the fans into place at the bottom using the included fan screws. And then we can replace our bottom dust filter. We've got a spare system fan header at the bottom so we'll bring the PWM cable through and get it plugged in. We're now ready to install our power supply and I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables we're going to need. So I've plugged in our 24 pin motherboard cable two 8-pin EPS cables to provide additional power to our CPU and a 12-volt 2x6 cable to power our graphics card. Next we can set our power supply into place with the fan facing out the way and we'll secure it into place at the back with four of the large power supply screws. 
Our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard. So we can bring our cables through the rubber grommet at the top and get them plugged in. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. And our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout. We'll line it up with the motherboard and push into place. And again, pull all the excess cable through to the back. So just like our case fans, our NIO fans are going to connect magnetically, as is our fan cable. We can then set our fans onto the radiator and we'll secure them into place using the long radiator screws. And then we just need to install the Intel bracket on our pump. It's simply going to push into place. We can then set our I.O. into place at the top and we'll secure it into place using the short radiator screws. Next I'm going to pass the cables coming from our fans through the cutout to the back. Our CPU fan header is this header here at the top. I'm going to bring the PWM cable through and we'll get it plugged in. So I think that actually looks quite untidy running all the way up to that rubber grommet. So I'm just going to bring it through the back connector cutout and get it plugged in. And that looks much tidier. Next yet we've got our ARGB cable. So I'm just going to bring it through and get it plugged in. Next we can add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. So if you're installing the AIO from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the cold plate you're going to need to remove. And what I like to do is just wrap all the cables up towards the top of the case where they're going to be organised. So we've got our PWM cable, I'm going to route around this side. And if we take a look at the side of our AIO, we're going to have to plug a USB cable in. And this cable I'm just going to route over the top of the cold plate to help keep it organised. But I'm going to bring it through the cutout in the case first. Okay, so we can just line our pump up with the bracket on the motherboard. And then we just need to get a thumb screw onto each corner. And then all we need to do is tighten up each thumb screw in turn. I'm just going to route the black USB cable up to the top of the case. And then our CPU ops header is just to the left of our CPU fan header. I'm going to get the PWM cable plugged into it. And then we'll just route the fan cable through to the back. We've got two USB 2.0 headers at the bottom of the motherboard. So we'll bring the USB cable through and get it plugged in. Next we've got our graphics card to install and we're going to need to remove the second, third and fourth expansion slot cover from the top. And to open the clip in the PCIe slot we just need to press this button. My GPU is massive and I've already sized up this GPU support bracket. Even all the way down at the bottom it's actually going to be too high for our graphics card. So I'm just going to need to remove the bottom thumb screw. So you can see now with the bottom thumb screw removed the bracket will go down that little bit further. I'm only going to be able to secure it with a one thumb screw but that's the best that I'm going to be able to do. Next we can insert the graphics card into the case, line that up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure and the graphics card is going to clip into place. And then we'll secure it with the three thumb screws. Next I'm just going to slide the GPU support bracket up to where I'm happy it's providing support for the graphics card. And then we'll tighten the thumb screw at the back. And you can see looking in there, there was no way the bottom thumb screw was going to fit. We can then bring our 12 volt 2x6 cable through the cutout at the bottom, line it up with the graphics card and push into place. And then we'll just tidy up the excess cable and bring it through to the back. Two final steps to take. We want to make sure that our GPU power cable is not going to get caught in our fans. And we're also going to want to make sure our GPU support bracket isn't catching our GPU fans, which it isn't. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again.
Okay, that's the build complete and looking absolutely amazing. As you can see, I've gone ahead and set everything up. If you don't know how to do that, I've made another video that covers setting up your PC after building it, and you'll find a link to that video in the description. So I'm just going to go and do a bit of thermal testing, and then I'll be back with a case review. So you want to hear what I think about the case, you're going to want to check out that video, and you'll find a link to it in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well.